the leader of the Illuminati and the Bible, the truth behind Genesis and Adam and Eve. The Adventures in Time of David Icke Stroke Oink. I must explain here that the Illuminati are all accomplished time travellers as well as shapeshifters and David Icke Stroke Oink has always been one of the most proficient. This can account for how he was able to perform such feats as Tenting Eve. The Bible got that one wrong. It was a pig, not a serpent, and the apple came from Tesco. It was a Granny Smith, incidentally. The above quotation comes from my account of how the leader of the Illuminati caused the sinking of RMS Titanic in the year 1912. I was explaining some of the background of David Icke stroke Oink, and I made reference to some previous disasters for humanity that had the Illuminati leaders hoof fingerprints all over them. One of the catastrophes caused by this shape-shifting and time-travelling megalomaniac was the Tunguska explosion in Siberia in 1908. Another one was the extinction of the dinosaurs 65 million years ago. It was careless exiting from a wormhole that caused mega explosions in both of those cases. Needless to say, David Icke stroke oink was not injured himself in any way. In the case of the 1908 incident, he is returning from Cana in Galilee. He gate crashed the wedding, drinking all the wine, thus creating a situation detailed more fully in the Gospel according to St. John. But it was the malevolent leader's intervention in the story of her first parents that I wish to account to you now. Hence the quotation that begins this story. Many people have expressed amazement at how all pervasive the influence of the Illuminati seems to have been in the history of humanity. When I made the above mention of how David Icke stroke Oink was responsible for the fall of man, I overturned a hornet's nest. My inbox has been flooded with mail on the subject ever since. Such diverse characters as Pope Benedict XVI and Richard Dawkins have been phoning me for more details on this dark revelation. I have had to instruct my secretaries to stop putting their calls through. I don't have time to deal with their opportunities. But in order that the Holy Father and the High Priest of Atheism can sleep more soundly, I'm going to tell the whole story now. The Book of Genesis Corrected The Biblical Book of Genesis tells how God created Adam and Eve and placed them in a the garden with dominion over all the creatures of the world. It further relates how God gave them permission to eat the fruit of every tree that grew in the garden, except the tree that stood proud in the centre of the garden. This tabooed plant was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It was actually a very large Granny Smith apple tree, but they were not to know that. So here we have the situation. Adam and Eve were having a lovely time in the beautiful garden. They could sunbathe all day, they didn't need to lift a finger, as all the food they desired was growing all around them. When they got bored, they could while it a few hours away, naming various animals. Life was indeed a bowl of cherries for the lucky pair, but things were about to change. Theologians in the Abrahamic religions have been debating for thousands of years of the identity of the serpent that is said to have tempted Eve to take the fruit from the forbidden tree and offer it to Adam. Some say that it was Satan the devil that called himself in the branches of the big granny smith apple tree. Others say that it was a real snake, but one that could talk. I heard a Freudian theologian once say that it was a sexual fantasy engaged in by Eve who mistook the writings of the reptile for the particular parts of her own father. That's Fridayans for you, full of rubbish. The fact that Eve didn't even have a father wasn't registering with this particular expert. Still, 
since the Bible interpretation has been overloaded with bold for thousands of years, nothing needs surprise. The truth of the matter is that there was no serpent. The story of the devil stroke reptile was invented by God to cover up the embarrassing reality of what did happen. It wasn't a reptile. It was a pig, or more correctly, a pig human. It was none other than the infamous leader of the Illuminati, David Ike stroke Ike. And just for once, he was actually blameless in the whole disaster. The power of the Illuminati and some problems. A curious feature of the shape-shifting pig-human species is that when asleep, they always revert to porcine form. This means that if you were to sneak up to his bedroom window to spy on David Eichstrow Oink when he was asleep, you would be faced with the sight of a snoring boar in a shell shoot, rather than the former television presenter and current propaganda of outrageous porkies that you would expect to say. This sometimes creates a problem when the leader of the Illuminati is travelling for long journeys on either trains or planes. His normal practice is to cover himself with a large coat that he feels like nothing off. Two flight attendants and three railway ticket inspectors have had to take extended sick leave because of the shock they suffered when they looked on the coat. If he is travelling with a companion who knows the score, that person is instructed to nudge him if they notice him dozing off. Adam and Eve eat of the forbidden fruit, or do they really? But to get back to our story, David Icke stroke Oink was returning from his local te Tesco superstore after buying a bag of granny spit apples that pig humans are particularly addicted to. He was using a mini wormhole for his journey. As well as being head of the most evil organisation in the world, the Illuminati leader is very tight about money. Another example of the banality of evil, I guess. He never shops in the present time, but always goes back about 10 years to get his groceries at cheaper prices. He was listening to a tape of Lyndon LaRouche giving a speech about European history and the evils of the Lombard conspiracy. I don't know how many of you have actually listened to this serial American presidential hopeful. I can assure you the rubbish he spouts in his speeches is only exceeded by the sheer boredom exerted by his turgid delivery. If you are driving a car or traversing a wormhole, don't listen to a Lyndon LaRouche speech. It's guaranteed to put you to sleep. This was the mistake made by the shell-suited megalomaniac as he returned through the wormhole. The result was inevitable. Another wrong turn. No dinosaurs were destroyed as a result this time. Neither were any trees in Siberia flattened. Instead, the snoring pig human materialised at the foot of a large granny spit apple tray before the startled eyes of the progenitors of the human race. Adam and Eve had been having an altercation. The problem of living in a, garden, in a garden with nothing to do but eat delicious fruit all day and name some animals was that boredom could be a constant hazard. They'd just been arguing about whether to call this little insect a flea or a jumping biter. The argument was just about to reach the stage where they started trying fruit on each other instead of eating it, when a sudden bang at the foot of the tree of knowledge of good and evil attracted their attention. A large pig appeared on its base. It was snoring loudly and there were granny spit apples spilling out of Tesco carrier bag was lying beside its supine form. Our first parents stopped the squabbling immediately. Eve dropped the overripe peach that she was aiming at the head of her husband, and the watermelon with which Adam was about to braid his irritating spouse slipped from his upstretched hands. This was something different. Life certainly wasn't so boring after all. With shouts of excitement, the couple rushed to greet the strange arrival. 
the news must have started with the plague that woke up and, of course, changed back into David Ike's straw blank. This certainly was turning into a day with a difference in paradise. When the leader of the Illuminati woke up to find himself lying in the garden, with a wildly gesticulating naked man and woman running towards him, he didn't think about the unique situation he found himself in. He just knew that there were a couple who seemed at least as mad as himself, bearing down at him at a run. His instinct was to flee, and that's exactly what he did. The wormhole was still shimmering above his head, so he grabbed his tactical carrier bag and dived for the 24th century. In the rush, he didn't notice they had left one of his granny smiths behind. When the stranger suddenly disappeared, Adam and Eve got a shock. They had been looking forward to some company. It was a big disappointment for them when the visitor vanished. They just stood underneath the tree looking around them to see if perhaps the stranger was hiding. They looked up into the branches, but nobody was clinging there. Then there was a moment, a bit like when Prince Charming finds a glass slipper. A shiny green apple was glistening on the ground, so somebody had been there after all. It wasn't an illusion. This lovely piece of fruit must have been left as a gift for them. Eve reached down and picked it up. She took a bite out of it and handed it to Adam so he could have his share as well. The father of mankind bit into the granny smith. He really shouldn't have done that. God makes a boo-boo, the divine cover-up. Up in heaven, God was having a rest. It had been a pig of a week creating all those stars and planets, not to speak of all the creatures put in them. The final bit of creation had been making the man and woman and placing them in the garden. He didn't have the time to name all the animals, so he decided to let the man do it for him instead. The woman could help him. It would give them something to do to pass the time, and he could put his feet up for the seventh day. He didn't make too many rules for the couple in the garden, but he was absolutely adamant that they should not touch the fruit that grew from the large tree in the centre of their domain. As luck would have it, he chose the very moment to check on them that Eve picked up the apple and double ate it. It is not often that God misses something, but he hadn't seen David Ike draw blank. All he knew was he looked down and saw Adam and Eve scoffing, scoffing at Granny Smith. God hit the roof, if heaven has one. This was all he needed. Mm -hmm. The couple's feet didn't touch the ground. This is literally the truth, as God picked both of them up with his divine hand. They were dropped into a clump of thistles that was growing just the wrong side of the garden wall. That'll teach them, he thought. Later on, God cross-examined the thistle-punctured couple. At first he didn't believe them, but when Adam showed him a little stick on Tesco label that was all that remained of the apple, God realised his error. I'm afraid this was the only example of an oops moment ever for the creator of the universe. Still, there was no going back now. It was time for the cover-up. God could never admit to making a mistake. It just didn't go with his image. A little bit of fast footwork in the divine mind, and the solution to the problem was found. Adam and Eve would be kept out of the garden. They were a very loyal couple anyway, and didn't deserve all this spoiling. It didn't take long to come up with a story about the serpent. All God needed to do now was to inspire somebody to write a sacred book to put the revised version of the fall of man into. There would always be enough people naive enough to believe that a book written under the inspiration of the Divine Majesty must be the literal truth. So it has proved to be. Until this moment, nobody except for me knew the truth. Even the leader of the Illuminati himself didn't realise the momentous changes that ensued 
got the wrong turn he took on his way home from the supermarket. If David Icke stroke Oink reads this, it would be the first time he ever realises his real importance in history. I hope it doesn't inflate his already overextended ego. I don't think the world could take that expansion. How this earth shattering information came to light? There are some among you who will ask how I'm privy to the information I've just divulged. I can tell you that now. When Adam was expelled from the Garden of Eden, he kept a souvenir. This was the very same little stick on label that was on the Tesco Granny Smith apple, which he had eaten on the day which we live in infamy so long as humankind endures. The father of humanity also wrote his memoirs. These, together with the label, were deposited in a cave in the desert of Iraq. They were contained within a very old pottery jar. They were found in 1982 by Kamal Harda, who sold them to the museum in Baghdad. I heard about them in 1996. When I realised the importance of the materials, I secured them for myself by bribing a corrupt curator, who just happened to be the second cousin of Saddam Hussein. Carbon dating indicated that the label was 6,500 years old. When I read about it, how the mysterious apparition in Eden changed from a pig to a human, I put two and two together. It could only be David Icke stroke Oink. The leader of the Illuminati is the only shape-shifting time traveller who shops in Tesco. If anybody knows different, please let me know, and I can correct the record.